Joining me now is Charlie Hedges, uh, who is one of the UK's foremost experts on missing persons. Uh, good of you to take the time out this Saturday morning to, uh, to speak to us, Charlie. Uh, so the police's main hypothesis then, as we were all heard yesterday, is that she uh, simply fell into the water here. It was a, a tragic accident. Um, what's your assessment, having, having watched uh, events unfold over the last eight days or so? That would seem to be the, the obvious thing to work on and, and obviously important to um, eliminate that by doing the searches if uh, it is not the case. Um, but they will be looking at other forms of uh, evidence and information to look for other lines of inquiry, which has been uh, supported by the press statements from the police. And so it's, a, it's not just about the river, uh, but that seems to be the, the, the most likely scenario at the moment. Yeah, there does seem to be a little bit of uh, frustration amongst the family that this uh, information was given out by the police uh, yesterday. H how unusual is it for uh, the investigation team to give a theory that, that, that isn't backed up by strong evidence? Um, unfortunately, it's one of the realities of working on these cases that you don't always get that evidence. It's slightly unusual to, re to release such a strongly worded statement so early. Um, but um, reading through the detail, it does appear that they are looking at all sorts of other opportunities and possibilities for what might have happened apart from the one they're particularly working on at the moment. Yeah, missing persons inquiries uh, do rely on uh, the public's help, don't they, so often. Is there a danger that the public may now think, well, it was a tragic accident, we can perhaps take our eye off the ball a little bit, we don't need to bother looking at that dash cam footage or, or whether, whatever it might be? I think it is important to keep those other lines of inquiry open and encourage the pub public to look for things. Someone might be sitting on information that they think is unimportant, but could make a significant difference. Um, so it is it is important to keep that going and, um, and and to look at all of the opportunities. Yeah, of course. Um, tell me how it works when a call initially comes into police about a, a missing person. What's the, what's the immediate assessment that's made? Well, it has to be assessed against the uh, the information that's already known and um, the the veracity of the caller ascertained. They need to be uh, interviewed to, to find out exactly what it is that they saw. Uh, sadly, um, the police will get a number of calls uh, from people who are fantasising about what they might have seen or um, think they've, they've seen things that aren't important. So it needs to be filtered through, assessed and then move forward, but in a, a very... Uh, prompt and timely manner. And Nikki has been missing now for well over a week. Um, what are the statistics about how quickly missing persons inquiries are solved? The vast majority are solved within the first few hours. Uh, people tend to go and then come back. Um, the next big tranche within the first 24 hours. So when it goes on longer, it is uh, more concerning. Uh, but some go on for many, many years without being resolved. As one family I worked with, um, Damien Nettles, he was 16, and went into the water when he was 16 and has never been found. Yeah, really, uh, really tragic. And, uh, and the average demographic of someone who goes missing uh, in the UK? The uh, vast majority of um, mid-teens, um, they unrest at home or in their care situation go missing very regularly. Um, the spread across the country is fairly broad and most other age groups are fairly evenly uh, distributed. Um, the last data we have that the, the police had in 2021 was the 266,600 plus um, calls for assistance in relation to missing persons. And this case then, from, from everything you've said, is, is pretty unusual um, it, 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 and the, the police it almost seems like uh, a floundering a little bit at this stage. Uh, from all your experience as a police officer and as an expert in missing people inquiries, what happens at this stage on day nine? Well, it's reviewing the, the, the evidence and the information that's available, making sure they're covering all of the relevant um, areas, uh, reviewing the search activity to make sure that has uh, been uh, properly done. Which I'm, there's been a huge amount of effort put into that in a very, very difficult environment, incredibly difficult to search rivers with, uh, with this level of certainty. Um, but it's a review process, looking back, reflecting, and uh, trying to identify any new lines of 
in investigation and inquiry, and also being able to fully understand everything about Nicola, her life and what have you, which is difficult for the family because it needs to be intrusive, but we need to fully understand what's going on to see if there are any other reasons why she might have gone missing.